feedback and only if you're asking a question can you turn on your microphone please make sure you adhere to that as best as possible uh, 10 minutes uh, for the live section and 10 minutes for the embargoed section we're going to start with Tony O'Donoghue please Thanks, Kieran. Hi, Stephen. How are you? How are you, Tony? How are you? Uh, well, you know, it's certainly a possibility. I think, um, you know, we have other options in that regard and in, in, in people like Cyrus Christie, Ryan Manning, of course, and, and James McLean, who's just obviously come back from injury and come come on on the last two games. So we do have other options uh, in that regard. So we'll have to wait and see. But have you thought about the system and how it worked against Luxembourg? What are your thoughts having looked back on the game now? Well, I think we played... You know, three, four, one, two against Serbia, and I thought it worked brilliantly. In fact, I thought it was probably one of the best displays by an Irish team away from home in recent years. And I think uh, we played very well. Lost a narrow game. Obviously, we got we made one or two mistakes and got punished in the end, which we were disappointed with. But our overall display was excellent. I think um, against Luxembourg, again, we, you know. We, 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 we've dominated a lot of possession, but obviously in the final tour, we had situations, a lot of situations, 4v3, a lot of, a lot of situations where we could overload and, and maximise the situation in the final tour, and we didn't do that. We've look and have a look back at the game, reflected on it. We did a lot of good things in the game, but we didn't capitalise on the opportunities we had in the final tour, and that was a disappointing aspect of it because we didn't create enough clear cut chances. James Collins had. Uh, a great opportunity that we thought was in. Obviously, Shane Long had had two chances, had a header and had a chance through. Um, and Ro Robbie Brady gave us good delivery from that. Alan Brown had a free header. And uh, obviously, James Collins, Collins had the overhead kick. But we didn't create enough clear quick chances for the possession that we had. And that's a big, that was an issue for us, you know. I think we didn't deserve, looking back on it, we definitely didn't deserve to lose the game. They've only had one chance in the game and a shot from outside the box. And we definitely didn't deserve to lose the game. We had the lion's share, but we... Admittedly, you shouldn't be losing. It's a home game against Luxembourg and you're expected to win. And I respect that. But we did definitely didn't deserve to lose that game for sure, even though we must do better. Uh, there's no doubt about it. We must do better in, in the way that, in our creativity in the final tour. Uh, Guy Havard, please, Guy Sports. Hi, Stephen. Uh, hope you're well. Just to have okay. a up on that, you said you didn't deserve to lose. You come in for a lot of criticism individually and as a team for the last sort of Hours. Do you, how do you respond to that and do you think it's fair? Um, <laughs> listen, criticism, I, under, I knew when I took the job that that's, that's where we're at, okay? If you, if you lose to Luxembourg, you have to uh, accept the criticism. Um, I'm not naive in that regard. But I do think, uh, you know, I think looking over, over the way we've um, played, we're a penalty kick away from... Um, you know, Scotland, for example, have beaten Israel on penalty kicks, and and then Serbia on penalty kicks to go through. We we lost on penalty kicks to go to go out against Slovakia away in a, in a really top class performance in that match. I think in the game against Serbia, we showed what we're made of. We played really well, lost three two. The big the big letdown for us has been losing to Luxembourg. We wanted to go away. We've introduced 13 uh, young players into the squad. We've introduced. Um, incorporating them with some of the senior exist players that have been in the squad. I think we wanted to go to Spain for nine days in June, which we are, to work on you know the whole um, collective way we want to play and certainly to work on the, the spirit of the integrating all the players in with the, all the new players we brought in. And we wanted to, to ramp that up and with friendlies against Andorra, of course, and, and Hungary in June. And that's what we wanted to do and then bring that into September. But the big letdown has been losing to Luxembourg and that's been... You know that's been the big disappointment because Luxembourg, of course, of drama fr drew a France and France went on to world, won the World Cup. Uh, they, you know, they beat other countries. They've had a, some. It's not the Luxembourg of old, but and uh, you know we can't be disrespectful. But we our expectation is that we should be beating them at home and and we didn't. So you have to accept uh, criticism for that.
produce anything as a way of a protest, T-shirts, anything at all tomorrow night? Yeah, I think the, the, the intensity of the camp has been so hectic with three games in six days and all that's been around it and our focus on trying to win the, the World Cup games. Um, you know, I, I'm all about uh, freedom of speech. The individual, any individual has the right to, to uh, express their opinion uh, on, on, on the majority of issues. I've no problem with that. I think there is a clear issue with human rights uh, issues in in the building of stadiums in Qatar and, and the number of people have died, that's, you know, we can't sweep that under the carpet. That can't be ignored. And I think, uh, you know, initially the Norwegian team and, and various other teams then have backed that. And I do, you know, they're, they're entitled to do that with good reason. You know, I think, um, you know, I think, you know, the world, there wasn't, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's not acceptable, you know, for so many people to lose their lives. And the disparity of of w w disparity of wealth, you know, between rich and poor, you know, to have people living in the, in conditions of squalor and people dying is, you know, in in those conditions overall is not acceptable. But I think that's um, um, where do you draw the line? Do you say, for example, uh, America boycotting the Olympics in Russia, Russia boycotting the Olympics in America? What does that achieve? We're not sure. We're difficult. Even you know, years later, we still haven't really gauged a measurement of what that actually achieved. So, is it the handing out of the World Cup initially? Uh, is that the problem, the Qatar, or is that should teams refuse to go or players refuse to play? And those are those are different matters. Where do you, what, it's a broader picture then in sport. What other countries do you pick and say you can't do that? And and what other so it is it is very very complex issue and uh, something that. Needs a wider debate, maybe. Does that, sorry, does that mean that you will or you won't be protesting tomorrow? I don't know if the players are. I haven't discussed it with them. You know, I leave that to themselves. If whatever they, they want to do, we've not. I've nothing certainly nothing planned from my point of my point of view. Thank you very much. Forty-two, please. Yeah, the, you know, I think there's no points. We know that there's no World Cup points in, in, in the game. Uh, you know, it's our tour game in six days with two trips. Obviously, flying to Serbia, coming back, getting ready, get, jumping back on a plane to Hungary, getting back out, getting ready. So we're ready. We'll train tonight um, and uh, we'll get ready. We want a good performance. And, and you know, Qatar have, had, have beaten the other two teams, obviously, this week. Um, Azerbaijan and Luxembourg, and they, they were obviously... Uh, they won the Asia Cup, beating Japan to their credit, and they were in Copa America in the group with Argentina and Colombia. You know they've done very well overall football-wise. They've been they've been very good. So it's a, it's a it's a good game, and uh, we want to make sure we're ready. A lot of players are getting vital experience, and I think that's important. And uh, we want to, we want to put in a good performance. We're disappointed, of course, to lose. You know that we you know that's something we'll ha we're all aware of. You know that that's that that is. Uh, a huge disappointment from losing the game due to night. So we want to put that, um, you know, we want to sort of, as you say, finish on a better note. Mm. And finally for me, Stephen, do you see tomorrow night's game as a chance to, uh, to give minutes to those uh, perhaps experienced, more experienced players who haven't, uh, who haven't featured in the last few games? Yeah, we, we, you know, yeah, I think, you know, there, there, there will be changes in the team, of course, and I think, uh, one of the things that we found is that some players that weren't playing, one of the problems that we've had when we've analysed everything, one of the play, players that weren't, aren't playing in teams, um, when they had to go the second game, you know, in three days, having not played in a month or, or something, or not played in six weeks, so had to go the second game, they found that they couldn't get to the levels they were at in the, in the opening game, uh, with speed and sharpness, and that was that was an issue. And it's not an excuse, like I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses, I'm just giving, um, uh, I'm just trying to give you some some feedback, and that's that that's it. Thank you. Okay, we've only got two minutes left of the live section, so uh, Ronan, uh, everyone in from this point, just keep it to one question, try and fit as many as possible. Ronan Matamara, please. Hi, Stephen. Uh, 
Um, just to go on. back to the young players there, um, there's seven players in, at 18 who Duke Keller, who has unfortunately withdrawn the, in the squad who are under the age of 22. Uh, do you think it's a case of short-term pain in terms of lack of consistency and results in order for these players to come through the long term as you try to change the style of play? Yeah, I'm very determined uh, that we will improve and, and get it right. We've just had a, a real kick in the teeth losing to Luxembourg. Um, and I understand because of World Cup points are so sought after and hard earned that that, that is it. I'm not going to try to, um, you know, it's, it'd be too easy for me to say that I oh, would have lo you know long-term success with this. But what I will say is that all of those players coming through, a lot of them are, are, are very talented some suggestions of some of them they'll all end back back playing in Ireland and they're not that talented. All those players that have come in, Daryl O'Shea, Jason Knight, Jason Malumbi, Aaron Connolly, uh, Cueven Kelleher, Gavin Bazunu and, and all of those players, they will all have great good careers at the, at, a, at the top level. They are going to be good players for Ireland in the future and they are talented players and you will see them blossom and other players like Troy Parrott as well and you know players that I haven't even mentioned, the Adam Oid is the the um, you know uh, y young Nathan and I think we've got we've got a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of players coming through and I think there's that that's a real positive in relation to um, but I do think it's not just long term I think we've been good and we can be good in this campaign we just we were very good against Serbia we just let ourselves down by not capitalising on the situations that we had the other night against Luxembourg and and not been creative in the areas that we sh we could have been and that's really hurt us Thanks. one more question in the live section ronan murphy yeah so the, the irish public and perhaps the irish media too were maybe guilty of underestimating luxembourg do you think that that could be the case against qatar that the irish public might think that this is an easy game for Ireland, especially given recent friendly against oman probably might be similar in, in a type of style of opponent. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think there's a comparison um, between a man and Qatar. Like uh, you know, I think I've spoken already about they've they've had some good results and uh, they've obviously um but the the opportunity to play in Copa America was obviously very beneficial for them and uh, I know the opportunity to to be in air group as uh, albeit as friendlies I'm sure is I'm sure is good preparation for them getting contrast and styles between Copa America and and the European styles um when they when they when they play in the World Cup so they've had consistently good results so we'll have to we'll have to be at our best okay guys we're going to move into the embargoed section now so everything from this point onwards 